Hey, I'm Stan Prokopenko, and this is Proko. Last time, we learned that the trapezius makes the back wall of the neck. But what the neck is all of this stuff over here? Let's swing over to the front and explore the rest of the neck. There are a lot of small muscles in the neck that pop out when the neck tenses and moves around. We'll go over 10 muscles in the premium lesson. In this video, I'll focus on the two muscles that affect the surface the most, along with some bones and cartilage. Bones and cartilage. As always, anatomy starts with the bones. Note that the spine inserts on the back of the skull, completely behind the jaw. The throat sits in front of the spine, making up for half the width of the neck. The mandible, or jawbone, will be an important attachment point today. So will the hook of the mastoid process behind it. You can easily feel the mastoid process on your own head. It's the hard, bony area on the back of the skull, just behind the bottom of your ear. Some neck muscles attach to the clavicles. Remember that there's a small gap between the clavicles where the manubrium sits, about one eyeball wide, before they flow out into that cupid's bow shape. And where is that music coming from? Here we see the Adam's apple, also known as the thyroid cartilage, that surrounds and protects the voice box. It sits just behind the hyoid bone, in front of the spine and esophagus and all that, but behind the muscular wall of the neck. The Adam's apple is larger and has a 90 degree angle on men, but women actually have one too. Eve's apple is just a more open 120 degree angle, so it's less noticeable. There's another cartilage, called the cricoid cartilage, right under the thyroid cartilage, which looks like a class ring. There's a thyroid gland that covers the cricoid cartilage and softens it, depending on how big the gland is. The hyoid is a small, horseshoe-shaped bone above the Adam's apple. It's the corner between the bottom plane of the jaw and front of the neck. It's an unusual little bone because it has no joints or direct attachments to other bones. Time for muscles. There's no competition. These three muscles are the largest and most important neck muscles for artists to learn. The lavator retriever, the sternocleidomastosaurus, and the trapezotron are essential for expressing the forms and motions of the neck. We already learned the trapezotron, so let's get on with the other two. Levator scapulae. The levator scapulae is a diagonal muscle visible on the sides of the neck. It originates from the top four cervical vertebrae and inserts on the topmost point of the scapula, at that medial superior corner. The muscle twists on itself, so the fibers coming off of the highest point of the scapula attach the lowest on the neck. As for what it does, levator scapulae! Levator scapulae! It's levator scapulae! Not levator scapulae! Levator scapulae! Oh. 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 Yep, the levator scapulae levitates the scapula. Or rather, lifts up the medial edge. Sometimes it activates just to stabilize the scapula. So you'll see the levator scapulae popping out in a lot of different poses. If you're having trouble identifying neck muscles, the levator scapulae is the one that points to the ear. It's buried under the sternomastoid anteriorly and by the trapezius posteriorly, but its middle third on the side of the neck is superficial. Sternocleidomastoideus. The sternocleidomastoideus, the sternocleidomastoideus, it sounds intimidating, but the sternocleidomastoideus is probably a muscle you're at least a little familiar with. It's the one that makes the neck's V-shape as it goes from behind the ear to the pit of the neck. Its three-part name describes its three attachments. It originates from the top of the sternum, sterno, as well as the medial third of the clavicles, clido. 
and inserts on the mastoid process of the skull. Mastoideus. Sternocleidomastoideus. You can also call it sternomastoid for short. It has two distinct origins, and that means two distinct muscular heads with a small gap above the clavicle. It's superficial throughout its entire length, so the sternomastoid is a must-know muscle. When it activates, it rotates the head to the opposite side. If both sides activate together, they flex the head forward. That's the sternocladiomastoideus. <coughs> Next time, how to draw the neck. See you then. To learn about eight more neck muscles, check out the premium course at proco.com slash anatomy. So we have a premium section for students that want to learn more. The premium section has extended lessons with more information about the topic. It also has additional drawing demonstrations. If you do the assignments for each lesson, these demonstrations serve as the answers for the assignment, so you can check your work. There's an ebook version of each lesson that you can download as a PDF. Print them out or keep them on your device so you can quickly review the lessons. And finally, the premium section has 3D models that you can spin around, study, and draw from any angle. If you don't want your drawings to look like this, go to proco.com slash anatomy. If you like this video, don't be all selfish. Share it with your friends. And if you want to be updated about new videos, click this button or go to proco.com slash subscribe. The sternocladiomastoideus <laughs> The sternocladiomastoideus, it sounds intimidating, but the sternocladiomastoideus is probably a muscle you're at least a little familiar with. That's the sternocladiomastoideus. Levator scapulae! Levator scapulae! It's levator scapulae! Not levator scapulae! Levator scapulae! Oh.